Ladies and gentlemen, seekers of light and secret knowledge wherever you may be, you are listening to Points of Light Radio, the podcast dedicated to taking you past the apron and behind the closed doors of lodges everywhere. And here is your host, Stan Miller. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Shalom. Assalamu alaikum. It's wonderful to be back with you here on Points of Light Radio, continuing our journey here of light and knowledge. In today's segment of Points of Light Radio, we will be revisiting the Fraternal Order of Eagles. Now, it's been a while since we fellowshiped with the Fraternal Order of Eagles. If you recall, I believe it was July 6th of last year, a uh, fellowship with a member of uh, the order. And, you know, just to recap some of the things we learned there, the Fraternal Order of Eagles is a non-political and non-sectarian international fraternal order founded in Seattle, Washington in February 6th, 1898 by 6th theater owners. It's quite an interesting story, actually, if you read that. I encourage you to do that. The lodges of the Fraternal Order of Eagles are known as Aries. Now, the Fraternal Order of Eagles, and I want to recap this because it's rather important. They've had some very prominent members of society in the ranks. Among them, Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven presidents. And those include presidents of the United States, the following, Theodore Roosevelt, Warren G. Harding, Franklin D. Roosevelt, and his wife, (laughs) Harry S. Truman, and his wife, President John F. Kennedy, Jimmy Carter, and Ronald Reagan. And as I asked in the July 6th, segment of Points of Light Radio, why is it that every conspiracy theorist can tell you that Harding, Roosevelt, and Truman were Freemasons, but they don't remember that they were also members of the Fraternal Order of Eagles, right? So I've only briefly encapsulated here, but my guest for this point of light segment is Stephen Dunkelberger. You may recall when him and his friend were here, uh, shedding some light on the dramatic order of the Knights of the Khorasan with us. That was a great segment too. And uh, we'll definitely, as I keep saying, I said we'd have to have one or both of them back. Well, this is one of them coming back. Eventually I'll have them both back because that, that, was, that was a really fun segment actually. Um, but today, Mr. Duckelberg will be, uh, as I said, shedding some light on the Fraternal Order of Eagles. He is a member of the Fraternal Order of Eagles, Airy number 2933 in the state of Washington. So let's go have Mr. Duckelberg shed some light on the Fraternal Order of Eagles. But are you still thirsty for knowledge? Are you still searching for the light? And just trim your lamp. Mr. Dunkelberger. Hello. Welcome back to Points of Light Radio. Well. How are you doing this fine day? Very good, thank you. Why don't you tell my listeners and viewers about yourself? Well, uh, I'm Steve Dunkelberger. We're here in glorious downtown Tacoma, home of the 253. Um, uh, I... I'm an educator. I also write history books. I also do Steve's Drunk History Tacoma Edition. So I talk about historical stuff, local history uh, in bars and fraternal lodges and all that stuff. Uh, retirement homes. So. Uh, so you're also a member of the Fraternal Order of Eagles. Yes, I am. First of all, what area do you belong to? 2933 of South Tacoma. Okay, and uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, first of all, the Fraternal Order of the Eagles. Well, uh, it's I guess it's one of the, um, uh, follows the, the s- standard track for Fraternal Lodges, but it 
it started locally, although it's international at this point. But uh, on February 6th, 1898, you had six uh, theater owners uh, getting together to kind of quell a musician strike in Seattle, which is about 20 miles that way. And the idea was is that they would put the f- front the, the the benefit money for it, and then the musicians and the actors and the stagehands and all that stuff would, um, you know, become members and pay dues into it, and then that would be the benefit fund for workers' compensation, unemployment, uh, that sort of thing. So um, it became first the order of good things. <laughs> uh, and then once they adopt, once they got more official and they uh, adopted the eagle as their emblem, then it became the Fraternal Order of the Eagles. Where did the e- where did the idea for an eagle emblem come from? Do you know? Well, just because you know it's an all American uh, thing. You know, this is uh, oh. um, you know uh, something that was you know the the boost was taking taken the elk was taken so you come up with you know you don't want to be the turkey because then that would be a Benjamin <laughs> yeah. Franklin homage uh, for you history buffs out there. Uh, so they said, oh, eagle, eagle. You know, no one would go against it. So they figured the, the bald eagle. And then they said, well, why is the bald eagle the symbol of the order of good things? So they said, we'll just turn to the eagles. Okay. Now, what exactly do the eagles do? Like what? Uh, in On the national level or the Yeah, level let's say the uh, national. Let's take it to the national level, first of all. What do they do? Uh, well, a lot of them, they, they uh, raise a lot of their, say, you know, a hierarchy of everything. There are area presidents, which I am, uh, and then there are districts and, and state levels and then um, national levels. You'd be a national eagle president. And they do things like, a you know, boost membership with, you know, they oh, much like uh, they've got a discount program for, you know, like uh, uh, AAA or, um, you know, that sort of thing. If you're an Eagles member, you get 50% off our... Hertz rental car or a state of Marriott, you know, that sort of thing, benefits program. Uh, but they also do things like raise money for diabetes uh, treatment and research, uh, uh, Heart Association, Cancer Society. Uh, that that well, I was going to ask you about that because they have been known as people helping people. Yeah. So how do they, how, how exactly do they help people? And you just mentioned diabetes. So how would they go about helping, like raising funding and stuff for that? Well, again, that would be the national, and then it's the local level that uh, we can talk about. Certainly, that's more local. Okay. Um, but yeah, they, they they do you know uh, you know fundraisers and and things like that, where they raise millions of dollars for a charity, and then you know for diabetes research, which is an ongoing and growing problem. So yeah. you know yeah. the 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 more development we have on treatment, then the better off that would be. That you know wouldn't be funded otherwise on the national level. And then on state levels, they have things like um, they raise money for, you know, the American Red Cross or, um, you know, whatever different what the state president adopts a charity for that year. And then underneath that, every airy president has a charity that they then raise money for. So mine, for example, is the Heritage League of Pierce County. Okay, which is basically all like any community. Pierce County has a lot of very small city and town niche museums that are mostly run by, you know, volunteers and maybe donated or, or you know, funded space that uh, has a shoestring budget of maybe a thousand dollars. Right. And so what the Heritage League does is those museums and historical sites uh, are members of this group for like fifty dollars a year, and then that provides them with access to. Um, you know, training about software and ascension programming and policies, um, hiring and grant writing, um, how to display things properly, uh, that sort of thing. One of the things that I'm working on is called the ERT program, which is the emergency response team. So many, many of your, your national viewers would remember, or international members would remember uh, when uh, the Cathedral at Notre Dame was burning down and the spire collapsed on live TV. Um, and that got a lot of people saying, what would have happened if our a museum burned down? What would we have done? And then our museum in our, our museum, the Washington, the a local museum in Aberdeen, which is uh, by the, the Portland border, um, got flooded. And so they lost a lot of their archives because they, um, oddly enough, like every museum, their archives are in the basement. That's the lowest place in the building. And that's where the water went. 
Yeah. So they lost a lot of that stuff because they didn't know where to put it. Once they pull it out of the water, then what do you do? So what the 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 ERP program is doing is uh, getting things like okay, getting a roster of all the storage spaces that we have. So if there's a fire or if there is a um, a flooding at a museum, we automatically know where to go. And here are the industrial trash bags. Here are the mops. Here are the um, you know archiving boxes so things don't get ruined. Here's how to dry them out. That sort of thing. So. Okay. Now. What exactly are the qualifications to join the Fraternal Order of Eagles? Uh, let's see. You have to be uh, 18 years old or, or more. Um, you um, have to pass a rigorous interviewing process. Um, that you have, to be, you have to be nominated by two current members in good standing. So they sort of vouch for you. And then you go t- uh, to a, an interview process, and they're interviewed by the interview committee, and then the interview community gives you a thumbs up and thumbs down based on you know your your character and willingness to serve that sort of thing, uh, and then you're voted on the general by the general membership. Okay, and you can be a man, woman, doesn't matter. Yes, um, you can be a uh, you can be a man or a woman in the Eagles Airy, which is the main building, and then of course you have the auxiliary in our lodge. Not all lodges have them, which is the women's only. Okay. Effort. Okay, so do they have a degree system in the Eagles? Nope, that's it. Once you remember, you're a member. Okay, so, okay. And, like, how long has your area been around? Uh, let's see. Um, well, I guess, yeah, let's see. It's been around since 67, I believe. Well, long before I was born. But before that, it was the Arlington Community Center, long before there was really a active you know, Parks Department, YMCA system uh, in that neighborhood. So they, you know, everyone got together, operated as a nonprofit, as a rental hall for, uh, you know, dance lessons, town meetings, weddings, receptions, funerals, that sort of thing. Um, and then that passed away. Um, uh, and there was a vacant for a couple of years, and then we stepped in. The, the lodge itself has been active since 49, but we haven't, we've been in this building since the 60s. Okay. And Which is behind me, by the way. That's the image. Okay. And uh, when do you meet? Uh, well, it's open every day. Okay. Um, we meet the the airy meeting, the membership meeting where we vote on things, you know, standard business meeting, um, is every other, what's the second and fourth Wednesday of the month. Okay. And then the auxiliary meets on the first and third Wednesdays of the month. And then on the months where there is a fifth Wednesday, then there's a joint meeting. Okay. And how long are these meetings? It depends on the topic. Um, okay. If there's initiation, uh, you know, they're not, uh, we, they're maybe an hour, hour and a half. Okay. Yeah. And if we do initiation, it'll be longer. What's the dress code for a meeting? Uh, pants. Yeah, I understand that. <laughs> yeah. But it's like uh, a certain just, tie. Sure. No, 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 no. We're we're very casual. Um, I just say it, it's much like um the the feel at least our area. It's much like the feel of a, um, you know, a community room in a camping ground. Okay. Now so I want to ask you this: mm-hmm. How do you explain the growth in the Fraternal Order of Eagles in the Philippines? Uh, it's well, voting uh, like it's. Uh, well, I, I think part of it, because because the Knights of Pythias also are, are growing uh, uh, yeah. out there, too. Um, and I think what it is, is that the Philippines is is growing in for all fraternal lodges, as far as I know, um, because that is their, that is the, the old school for fraternal uh, social network and social um, so, uh, safety net. Okay. Um, where, you know, you, you pay into it with dues and... Um, then with that, you know, depending on what the lodge is, you know, you may get a unemployment benefit or workers' compensation benefit or a uh, a death benefit where they, you know, the lodge will pay for your funeral based on insurance. Cause, yeah, um, I also heard, I also heard, and I don't know, what do you, why do you feel about this? I've also heard it could be something to do with um, a loss of a lot of the influence of the church and religion in their lives. Do you, would you, would you agree with that? Oh, oh, well, yeah, I would say that that's not necessarily indicative just the Philippines. I would think that 
uh, one of the reasons why you're seeing a a, a turn, uh, an upturn in fraternal lodges, because yeah, what what were the main social networks that people built um, for their families? It was around school, it was around church, it was around where you work, and now no one lives where they work or near where they work, so they've got different home families and work families. Um, fewer and fewer people uh, are going to church; they don't have that, and you know you're getting multi. Uh, generational uh, people living um, in neighborhoods that you didn't have before. That so you may not have connections to the schools. So they're looking for some place where they can find like-minded people, but not be thrown to the wind and just go into a bar. Yeah, and just randomly find people. Now you you find like-minded people because each area, like any fraternal order, uh, has its own sort of uh, flavor based on the makeup of who are the members. Because the members are the one volunteering to do this stuff, so they volunteer to, to do things that they want to do. Yeah. Well, going forward, what do you think that the Eagles need to do to, shall we say, stay relevant, to attract new membership, and to raise their profile, shall we say? Oh uh, well, I think that like like any fraternal lodge, we've got a lot of uh, we've got people joining uh, for the benefits, but not necessarily joining for. You know the volunteer. They don't. There isn't that necessarily that sense of giving back that yeah. we had a generation ago. Um, but you find that anywhere that people just simply aren't volunteering unless they get a direct benefit from that volunteering. Which to me, that's not volunteering. Yeah, and so uh, that, that's part of it. You know, so we we have things like I said. We've got things every day of the week. But uh, you know, some of our members are getting into their sixties and seventies. And they're like, you know, we'd like to have someone else come in and do this. And we've got a bar um, that people come in and visit every day, but they don't want to, uh, you know, they don't necessarily want to volunteer for, except for once every blue moon. It's like, you need, sort of need a, a deeper bench of volunteers. But that's to say to anybody. Yeah, of course. And, and but what, well, now you say that your members are in their 60s. Do you have any younger members? Oh, oh, yes, yes. I'm, I'm yeah. saying like the, the old school members. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, but the, how many the, how many young people do you get do you, uh, on average? Oh, your, I would say most of our new members are younger. Like how young? They are joining to well, I mean, um, you know, we get twenties and thirties. Good, uh, good. Um, uh, so, some of the, you know some of their forties now that they have you know they have uh, spent their time with their kids and now the kids are older now they look for something to do. Um, there's a, a lot of those. Um, it is a matter of. Uh, how do I say this? Um, the the older people who grew up in this particular area, who have been volunteering there forever, they don't, you know, they they keep doing it because they they like doing it, and so it's getting those younger members to go. Oh yeah, actually volunteering is sort of fun. Yeah, and I I guess I'm not one of those people because I'm fifty uh, plus years old, but um, but yeah, it is. I I joined and I immediately started volunteering for Taco Tuesday. So every Tuesday, I make tacos and that sort of thing. And now I I host our horse racing game every Friday, and I do my historical talks on that stage right behind me. So just because you know it's fun to do, and it provides families for something to do. Mm -hmm. So what what brought you into the Eagles? What drew you to them? Uh, well, Phil from the Night Spithy Show. He's a a friend of mine, and so he's a brother from. Uh, he's a brother from two fraternal lodges over. Um, and then I, you know, I got into it. He introduced me to it. I said, hey, come check it out. And I liked it so much that I kept going. And then I, you know, I always join an organization with the intent of eventually running it. So I worked my way up the, the chairs and now I'm the president. Okay. And, and what's that done for you? What do you think the Eagles have done for you? Oh, I've met some really great people. Um, really really fabulous people. It, it is create a sense. I uh, see how should I say this? a, it's a cross section of different people from different walks of life, all getting together, just want to have fun and relax wherever they are in life. And then, Oh, by the way, you know, they, Oh, you know, some people just want to come in and, and have a, a cheap tacos and bingo. Okay. That's cool. Some people just want to go there and they want, you know, they want to have a drink uh, after work or, whatever, and they can do that, but it's still not, you know, a standard bar in that, you know, if you leave your uh, wallet at your table, no one's going to touch that because everyone knows that you were sitting there. Yeah. 
um, you know, I've, you know, I've left my phone, you know, left my phone, left my wallet uh, on the counter. And like, oh, yeah, Steve, your wallet's over here. I'm like, okay, I'll get it. You know, so that sort of thing. Versus if you do that in a bar, it'd be gone before you get yeah, it. You'll never see it again. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, the benefit of being a uh, volunteer uh, airy, which most are, um, you know, we can have, you know, a, a $5 burger. We can have a, you know, a, I think beer is like four bucks, wow. you know, where if you go down to the bar down the street, it's now eight bucks. And Twelve dollar pints in a in a in a bar in Tacoma are not that's not unusual. That would be unheard of. Here. So you can have you know two or three drinks, drop a twenty, and get change back. Yeah, and what what would you, what what do you think? You know, for people who are thinking of joining something, what would you say to them about the about the uh, Eagles? Well, I think like like anything else, it is what you make it. And, you know, find a lodge that fits you. Um, one of the benefits that a lot of people do uh, in the Eagles that people don't necessarily, people outside the Eagles don't necessarily recognize. But I think that there are like 2,300 Aries around the United States and Canada now. Wow. And so you, as me, me as a uh, 2933 member, can go into the, their Aries and, um, it's a members only club. We, I can go in there and, you know, have all the benefits they can. I can't vote on their things, oddly enough. Um, but some, you know, you can camp in their parking lot. Um, most of them still honor that idea that, you know, if you want to stay a night, you know, you pull up your RV and camp in the parking lot for a night on you. So you could travel around the United States in your RV and just drive to the next air, uh, Eagles area. And then you can go to people uh, there and, get the local, you know, what do I want to see here? What do I want to avoid? Where, where should I eat? That sort of thing where people automatically have that connection with you because, Hey, you know, you're an Eagle member. It's true. It's very, very true. Well, Mr. Dunkelberger, I appreciate your time this evening and uh, all the best to you and your area, sir. Oh, great. Thanks a lot. Yeah, we're, we're, we're getting there. Thank you, sir. Steve Dunkelberger, brothers and sisters. Wasn't it great inner, uh, you know, revisiting the, the Fraternal Order of Eagles. I, some things I took away from this interview. First of all, this was an organ, is an organization with over 100 years of history behind it. Right? I think we forget that. Right? Uh, part of that history was those presidents that I mentioned. Every conspiracy theorist, like I keep saying, remembers the, the, the presidents and high-ranking members of society that were part of, shall we say, the Freemasons, but they don't remember that many of them belong to organizations like the Fraternal Order of Eagles. That's an important, those are important points to remember. And why would they want to belong to something like this? Well, given what you heard today, it's no wonder they wanted to belong to the Eagles, right? The Eagles... You know, you get out of it what you put into it. And as you can see, this is an organization that doesn't have a lot of the esoteric messaging and uh, learning that you have in other organizations, right? But it is an organization where you can contribute to society and to your brothers and sisters within your area, while at the same time having yourself a great time. And I think that's very important. As I've often said here on Points of Light Radio, give it some thought before you join any one of these fraternal order organizations. Ask yourself, what is it that you want to get out of it? Right? Do you want to have, for instance, as, as in some organizations where you have that continuing continuous exemplification of degrees or do you just want to join an organization where you can do a degree and then just get on with it get on with contributing get on with giving back get on with all those things and have yourself a good time and this is a prime example of where you can do that this is a wonderful organization like i said with a with a rich history right and which is really given back to the society that it's in Right? It's no small wonder that it's growing. 
And as you can see, part of, the, part of what we covered there, fraternal order of eagles is growing. Right? And I'm happy to say that because, like I keep saying, we want to preserve some of that history. Right? And we need to keep organizations like this around that can really continue to uh, give back to society and offer people a way to contribute as well. Right? But that's all I have time for today, brothers and sisters. But before I go, I want to remind you that this podcast is available on both YouTube and Spreaker. Please share, like, and subscribe when viewing Points of Light Radio on YouTube. I also welcome your comments and input. You can follow Points of Light Radio on my Facebook page at facebook.com slash points of light radio. My Twitter handle is at PO Light Radio. You can see the link to my Spotify channel as well as my Points of Light Radio store. Brothers and sisters, as I always say, I'm very sorry to part with you, and it's been a pleasure fellowshipping with you and my guest today. But until we meet again, just step into the light.